Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the series talking about this new studio that we're in. You're currently watching video number three. There is number one, which was the tour. Number two, we built giant sound panels that I'm slowly accumulating and putting everywhere. And then number three is this one, which we're gonna be talking about lighting and grip. In our next and final video, at least in this series, we're going to be talking about the camera setup that I'm using for filming in this new studio. I also wanna give a special shout out to b &H Photo Video for sending us some of this grip equipment to help us get this series made. You'll be able to find everything we talked about in this entire series in the description, so thank you b &H. Let's get into today's topic because we have so much to cover and we're gonna start by talking about lights. Right now, there's several different brands that I'm using, but for this current setup, as it stands here in 2019 for this new space, I'm using primarily two brands. So let me grab a couple of the lights from brand number one. And of course, you might not be surprised, but here we are with a couple aperture lights. So we're gonna be using the 120D Mark I, which I currently have right here. It's the only one that's not being used for this set. And then I also have behind me, you see this kind of fake window looking lighting. That is a 120D Mark II with the barn doors and the Fresnel lens. And that brings us to what's so awesome about these lights, and that's their smaller heads. They're quiet, except for the 300D, but we'll get to that. And there is uh, several bone mount options, which gives us a ton of flexibility when mixing and matching how we're using these lights. So the 120D Mark I and II and finally, I have the 300D as a key light. In my old basement studio, I really couldn't put the 300D to work, but here with all this space, we can finally let it stretch its legs uh, and do some cool stuff. So what I have currently for my key light is a 300D Mark I hitting one of those sound panels we made in our last video. If you haven't seen that yet, check it out. Once it bounces off that huge white surface, it then comes through a massive sheet of diffusion. And this sheet of diffusion is gonna help move us into the second brand of lights. This thing is made by IntelliTech, and it is a massive frame that can be packed up and easily transported. I have two of those rolling stands that we also use for our sound panels on either side clamped to it. This allows us to easily roll this whole massive piece of diffusion all over the studio. And then if that was not enough, there's also a grid that comes with this thing, which I currently am not using because I hate the way that looks in eyeglasses. So that is my aperture lights that I'll be using as well as the IntelliTech frame that I'm crazy in love with. Speaking of IntelliTech, we're using several of their lights as well. Excuse the noise. And some of you might remember, I've done some reviews of their lights, including their LC or Light Cloth 160, which is a two by two LED mat. So here I have several more of their mats and I'm gonna show them to you now. It's pretty amazing, this whole new system. They've changed their controller, which I have right here. You'll notice it's much smaller than the old controller. And this same controller will work for all the lights I'm about to show you. These lights are all very bright, starting at, I believe, 50 watts, going up to 160 watts. Uh, and that's the consumption, not the output. The output's ridiculous. Uh, and then we have a bi-color high CRI light. So if you wanna learn more about the light, check out the review I did a while back down in the basement. But here I have a couple new models. So here is a one by one, very simple. It doesn't fold and it doesn't bend. It's just a very, very lightweight, thin, light. Now all of these lights have a very similar mount, which I have off to the side here. And essentially they're fully metal. I'll unfold this one and uh, they open up. They're very easy to pack. They get very compact and they have Velcro on them. And that works with each of the lights. So I can simply mount this to this little thing and I can put this just about anywhere. It's so lightweight and I can use the same controller for all the lights. Let me set this one by one aside and we'll take a look at some of the other lights here. You'll notice all of them fold up to a one by one, even though several of these are much larger than this one by one, if that makes sense. So moving on to the next light, this is the LC160. So we're at the other end of the spectrum, huge LED mat, essentially four of these one by ones. And again, folds up, to the exact same footprint. You can see how thin these are, even though this one had to be folded up multiple times. And you can start to get a picture at how amazing this system is for travel or storage. All of these pack up to this tiny form factor. You've got a small controller that can be battery powered with V-mount or gold mount. 
It's amazing. So there's the LC160, the biggest, brightest one. It also comes in an RGB model, so keep that in mind if you're into RGB. The next one we have here is a one by two. And then finally, we have the one by three. So very similar to those larger Kino style light form factors that we've used in the past, but again, crazy lightweight. And you can kind of get creative in how you use this one because the bracket will allow the light to kind of bend into different shapes. So all really, really cool lights that have a very unique form factor. I'm so excited to use these as overheads. Because they're so lightweight, I can put them on a big boom arm and put different modifiers on them because these lights also can be used with soft boxes, grids, and I even spent $275 for the Shamira space light attachment for the LC160. So I can't wait to put that to work. That is the IntelliTech set of lights. There's one last one and it's over my shoulder here, this adorable little light. Let me grab it real quick. This is the Pocket Cannon and I've done a review of its bigger brother. So you can see it's a minuscule light. Let me take it off the stand here and I'll turn it off. Uh, it's so small. I'll remove the battery. That's it. It has a bunch of accessories that can be included with it. Powered off of MPF. The operation is very simple. You turn a knob, you turn it up, and that's it. Very, very bright, kind of focusable. You can cut it with the barn doors. So I'm using it currently as a little accent light to cover up that thermostat controller on the wall there. So really, really fun little light. Definitely gonna be great for little hair lights and things like that. So these are the two style of lights we're primarily gonna be using starting out here in the studio. Large chip, bright, interchangeable, bones mount, aperture gear, as well as these light mats from IntelliTech giving us tons of flexibility. So let's go ahead and jump into our stands because what's the point of an awesome light if you have no way to rig it up? And this is a massive part of this new studio, guys. I have been wanting to get into some cinematic lighting and gripping or grip equipment to help me with cinematic lighting for so long, but it's just not been possible with the ceiling heights I've had in the past. So we've got some really fun stuff to talk about and I'm really excited to kind of step up my game, move from using light stands and even C stands to some really awesome stuff. So when it comes to grip, I've got some little things here on the table and some big stuff that we'll have some B-roll of. And I'm gonna start with the most popular, most versatile tool when it comes to grip and that is the C stand. Now I have the legs of a C stand here, which is where we're going to start. So there's several different types of C stands, sliding leg, which help with stairs and uneven surfaces, but my favorite by far when it comes to a base for AC stand is the turtle base. Essentially, you have a giant pole that makes up the rest of the C stand, and then you have these legs, which with this little collar can be opened and closed. So if I lift up this collar here, the legs are freed and lock in place. I love that, it's so easy to get this set up, moved. If you're getting into a doorway and it's too tight, just close up the legs and you're good to go. I've been using this particular C stand for something like seven or eight years. So it's definitely one that's lasted me, even though it's not the most expensive and it's from Impact you can find of course on B&H. Another cool feature with the bottom portion or the legs of a C stand is that we have a junior receiver. So essentially you can buy one of these which has a very crude nickname, but essentially you can take this junior to baby pin and just drop it in to the bottom of the C stand base, lock it in place. And now we can put a light like a 120D or something like that on top of it and have a super awesome low setup for a light. The next style of stand that we're gonna be using and have been using a ton in my old studio and this one is the Impact Wheeled Stand Base. We used these in our last video to build some giant rolling sound panels and they're great for just about everything. Right now I have a monitor just off of camera, a big 27 inch mounted on one of those. They're just super versatile. Their legs fold up and they also don't go out very far. So they're very compact when it comes to the footprint. But if you need to put something heavy and long like a boom arm on a stand, you're gonna wanna look into the Impact Steel Roller. This stand is very similar. It has wheels, it folds up, but the base of the stand is much wider so you can easily put boom arms on it and support a little more weight further out. This is my go-to stand for light setups where you have maybe a 120D and a soft box or that boom arm with the IntelliTech Light Cloth 160. It's just a crazy versatile stand that can hold a lot of weight and roll around easily. Next up, we have the Impact Combo 
boom stand. And this stand's really interesting. So it looks similar to a normal stand and it actually operates very similar to one. You open it up and you can extend the stand center column. But at a certain point, it turns into an elbow. So if you need to, you can turn it into a boom stand or use it as a traditional stand. Next up, we have the impact boom arm. This is similar to the last stand, but it's just an arm. So it can be mounted to a C stand or any of the other stands we've mentioned so far. This is designed for heavy lights over long distances. So I've been using it with the wheeled steel base stand as well as C stands and it works great. It has a hook on the end for counterbalancing or using a battery powered light controller and it's just all around a monster of an accessory. The next stand is just a good old fashioned light stand. This is the Impact Heavy Duty Air Cushion Stand. It comes in two different sizes and I love this thing for multiple reasons. First and foremost, it can handle a ton of weight. I would have no problem putting a 300D or a 120D with a bunch of accessories on it and it's air cushion so if you accidentally loosen the knob and you don't have a hand on the stand, it'll slowly drop your light down. It's not gonna crash like a C-stand would. Another awesome feature with this light is it has a removable spigot at the top. You can actually remove it and either mount it sideways and extend a light outward or use the threads on either side. So you can flip the spigot around. You've got three eighths on one side and quarter inch on the other. So very versatile stands, very affordable and really really hardcore when it comes to the build quality and the amount of weight these stands can handle. Now I'm gonna run through a bunch of little accessories very quickly that you should know about if you don't already. And we're gonna start all the way over here with this guy, which is a very strange looking little pin, but essentially this is designed for drop ceilings or office ceilings like I have here. Essentially you loosen it and there's a little X clamp that can grip onto your ceiling and then you spin it and tighten it up. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you have a place to mount a light or build a grid or really anything. Similarly, they have the same kind of thing, but for cables, if you're gonna have a permanent setup, maybe a key light or a microphone, you can safely run heavy and large amounts of cables uh, across the ceiling. Another device that everyone should have at least one of is a Mathalini Cardellini uh, or vice grip, which I have here, or vice clamp. This is a really, really strong clamp that you can do just about anything with. There's several different models and lengths, so this is the longer end jaw, and essentially there is a little knob here where you can loosen the grip and bite onto things with it. So this is great for adding a baby stud to a light stand, if you wanna mount another light or something like that or put it on the end of a grip arm and now you can grab another pole. There's so many uses for this. So I would recommend picking up a couple. I use these constantly, even back in the old studio. And our next thing is also a clamp. This is a quacker clamp or a duck bill clamp, depending on who you ask. And you can do a lot of cool stuff with this guy. So its primary use is grabbing onto foam board, which is a wonderful tool. If you don't already, go to your Home Depot or Lowe's and buy a bunch of foam board. Uh, and if you get this clamp, you're kind of set. Another great little tool is a Visa mount stand adapter. So essentially you put this on the back of your Visa mount compatible monitor, and now you can throw it on a stand like I have with my 27 inch. I have it just off of camera here and I can just look over, boom, big beautiful image, and it's on a rolling stand. It's just wonderful. And the last but hardly least piece of grip equipment is a set of flags. So I have the impact set of flags, and I'm using one of them right now to kind of put a topper or top flag on my background light there. So this kit comes with several different holders, several different types of flags. So we've got blackout, we've got scrims or nets, we've got different types of diffusion and then smaller pieces for more delicate stuff. So there's lots you can do with this and a phenomenal tool to have if you do interviews or wanna build kind of a set like this and really control different parts of your lighting for your frame. And that ladies and gentlemen is going to wrap up this third video in our series tomorrow we're doing the final video which is going to talk about our camera system what rig what camera what lens systems are we using for this new studio which is going to be a lot of fun so thank you so much for watching for sticking in there with me links to everything will be in the description hope you have a great rest of your day we'll see you in the next video